Hey, what's going on guys? Rojas Media coming off possibly the worst Eagles loss in recent memory. Um, this this year has been, I almost compare this year to the 2019 Phillies, uh, but I think this is getting even worse. Um, and there's a possibility we could still make the playoffs. But you know, in comparison, there the Phillies were very mediocre and they still had a shot at the playoffs, even uh, coming up, you know, within a few weeks of the season. But we're talking Eagles here. Uh, it's been a really, really, really um, tough season. You know, Super Bowl expectations, whatnot. Obviously, um, I don't think we have those expectations uh, at this point. Uh, I think there's somehow we still have a shot at the playoffs. We're sitting here five and seven. Dallas Cowboys are six and six. Both possibly fighting here for a playoff spot. The Eagles obviously have an easier schedule than Dallas. Dallas has Chicago coming up this week. And Chicago with Trubisky coming off his one of his best games of his career. Uh, you know, it's it's the Eagles still have a shot. You got Giants twice, Redskins once, and then you had Dallas. And it's a possibility. Who knows? Uh, but there's been, you know, a lot of talk. Um, not just the past couple days, but you know, even past couple weeks. But who is to blame for the Eagles' struggles to this point in the year? Uh, you can look at coaching. We can look at the front office. And we look at the players. Those are really your three options to look at. Um, I want to. I, I want to kind of break this down a little bit, and then I kind of want to get your guys' thoughts as well for who, who, who would you put put the blame on the most? I'm going to run through here, and I'm going to tell you at the end who. I think might get the most of the blame, even though I think you can't really put the blame on one one uh, part of the team. But so we're gonna start with coaching here. Um, obviously, the coaching isn't 2017 Super Bowl Eagles coaching. You don't have Frank Reich anymore. Uh, obviously, Mike Groh isn't Frank Reich. I think at the time people didn't realize in 2017 how big. Uh, of a piece Frank Reich was as an offensive coordinator. Uh, he really, he, I mean, you know, people gave Doug a lot of credit and Doug should have gotten some credit, but obviously Frank Reich is the one really calling the plays, uh, you know, with trickery, um, running the ball when you should be, because obviously in 2017 they had uh, those running backs, Clement, Ajahi, um, Blunt, um, Smallwood, th those were the perfect little squad of running backs to where they were using them effectively. And obviously that isn't being used this year. Um, you have multiple running backs here. Uh, Sanders, Howard, Howard's hurt right now. Um, but all averaging at least four yards a carry. And you gave them the ball 19 times. You ran the ball 19 times against one of the worst run defenses in football. You ran the ball 19 times. That is absolutely terrible. You should be running the ball at least 30 times this, uh, this past Sunday, and you didn't do that. So obviously the play calling has been terrible. There have been times where on third downs, third and sevens, and you're you're playing a, a run option, whatever. It doesn't. It hasn't made sense at all this year. They're throwing the ball too much. Um, you know, Wentz, Wentz throwing the ball 46 times against Miami. He's throwing the ball, uh, you know, you see him having 40 plus attempts a game when um, you should be running the ball a lot more. Sanders has a lot of potential. Uh, you know, you you brought Jordan Howard in, even though he's missed the last couple weeks. You brought Jordan Howard in. You gave him money, um, or they could have traded for him. I don't remember exactly. But regardless, you brought Jordan Howard in to be that number one running back, and he has not been utilized effectively. Uh, I think the most rushing yards he's had this year is like. Maybe close to 96, I think, which is very good. That's only one time this year. Um, so, obviously, Mike Groh is a big problem. Um, play calling. Um, you know, I, I just don't, I don't think, as far as Doug Peterson, I don't think uh, the culture seems the same as it was two years ago. I think it's declined since that, since the high point of winning the Super Bowl, the the culture hasn't seemed like it's the same. It started this year with Nigel Bradham missing a preseason game in practice. I can't remember exactly. And he didn't let the team know if that he was going to make that game or practice. And 
there was no really disciplinary action done for it, and there should have been, and you know that was really that was made a thing, and it 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 should have that there should have been some action taken, uh, but nothing happened. And then you have the anonymous sources this year. Uh, well, that's happened a few times. Like, what? Is, I don't understand what that's about. Apparently, it was a receiver. Um, I can't see it really being Alshon Jeffrey. Uh, they just finally cut Mac Hollins. Finally, that's way overdue. Um, but the anonymous source thing, like, that doesn't seem like it really fits into what the Eagles culture has been about the past, you know, three years. That doesn't seem like it would, would be something. Um, and now Doug's saying this past Sunday that Miami wanted it more than us. That that is not, I mean, this is a two. That was a two and nine Dolphins team, and you're saying that team had nothing to play for, and that that team wanted it more than a team that's fighting to get into a playoff spot. That's absolutely awful. I never would have expected that from Doug. Um, I think that's definitely calls for concern. And another thing, did Frank Reich make Peterson look better than he was? Because remember, he's the one calling the offensive plays. Now the defense was really good as well that year. And I think Jim Schwartz is getting a lot of flack, which he shouldn't be, which I'm going to get to in, here in a second. But I don't think, uh, I mean, uh, Peterson to me, like, look, you won a Super Bowl in your second year, second, second year as a head coach, right? Obviously, you're doing something right. I'm not saying that Peterson shouldn't get any credit for the Super Bowl. He was, you know, his big part. But I'm saying, did Frank Reich make him look way better as offensive coordinator? Uh I think that's uh, that's really that's really a cause for concern. You know what I mean? I, I, now I think obviously they should be looking at a new offensive coordinator this off season. How he should already have a list of people he's going to be looking at, who's going to be interviewing this off season. As soon as the season ends, it doesn't matter what they do here to finish off the season. I think it how he's got to do something. No ifs ands or buts about it. It has to happen. Uh, so now let's move on to Jim Schwartz. Um, I think Jim Schwartz has been getting a lot of flack for how the defense has played. Obviously, you're the defensive coordinator. You should get some blame, yes, but I think he's been getting too much. People forget that he, what he did with that 2017 defense, even with the injuries. You know, even with the injuries that year. Uh, he, he made the defense play really well. Um, obviously, in the Super Bowl, you're going up against the greatest quarterback of all time. You're not going to really... You know, give too much criticism to Swartz for, you know, giving up as many points as they did. What was it, 33 points to the Patriots? But, uh, you know, th this year he hasn't had a lot, of, a lot to work with. The secondary has been awful. Um, the D-line has been good at times when they've been healthy. Um, linebacking core has been average. Safeties have been average. Um, Swartz hasn't. That's not all his fault. We're not going to sit here and say that Schwartz is a terrible defensive coordinator. We were praising him two years ago, and all of a sudden now he's a terrible defensive coordinator? No, he, he's dealing with uh, not very good talent. Yes, he has Mills and Darby back now, but are they really that good? Are they really that good? Come on. They're two average corners. So uh, that's, that's coaching. You know, I, they definitely do get blame. They definitely do get a solid amount of blame, but... Let's look at the front office. Like I said, we talked about Howie a little bit. Um, you know, drafting wise, um, I think we've realized at this point Howie's very average as far as drafting goes. Uh, you look at some of the shaky picks over the past couple years. Arcega Whiteside finally caught his first touchdown pass this past Sunday. Uh, he's been absolutely awful this year. Even as it doesn't matter, as a rookie, you looked absolutely awful. Uh, Matt Collins finally got cut. Um, Sidney Jones, obviously not a very good corner, uh, hasn't really panned out too well to this point. Derek Barnett, first round pick, very average to this point. One here, obviously, Nelson Aguilar uh, was drafted in 2015, I believe. He was a first round, 20th overall, and he w and he is he's had one good year really, that Super Bowl year. And I think last year, if you look at his stats, the stats weren't terrible. But obviously. Um, you know, can't can't hold him the ball to save his life. Can uh, can't catch the ball when it really matters anyway. Uh, Patriots game, the Falcons game, should have caught those balls. Uh, we're paying him nine million this year. He's got to go. Uh, but that's like I said, that's another another shaky pick by Roseman. At least how it's panned out this way. Uh, 
Good picks. Yeah, Dillard this year. Andre Dillard looks like a legitimate offensive lineman. Uh, Miles Sanders, I think if they use him, use him a little more, uh, he has a potential. Uh, another good pick by Howie. Uh, Dallas Goddard, I think, you know, once Ertz leaves, Goddard will be the guy, and he obviously has the talent and the potential. Um, another one, and obviously Carson Wentz. People forget that Howie drafted Carson Wentz, and Wentz had one MVP season, and, you know, it's... We'll, we'll see what Wentz... We'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Obviously, they franchised them, gave them all the money. Uh, so, you know, that, those are a couple good picks by Howie, but... His, his drafting's really, really been average. I don't, I'm not going to say his drafting's been terrible, but it's been pretty average. So, um, moves this year, moves, they, they should have traded for Ramsey, obviously. I think, I mean, I don't think that would have made the team so much better to the point where we get three or four more wins. No, I think that gets them one more win, and we're tied with the Cowboys. But still, that's, that's a move that should have been made. I think that's a move that definitely should have been made. Um... Another one, uh, why'd you bring back Jay Ajahi and you're not even using him? And another one, Jordan Matthews, I don't really understand why they keep bringing him back. You brought him back for two games. He was non-existent at all. Uh, just got to cut that relationship with Jordan Matthews. Um, like I said, not getting Ramsey. I think Jadavion Clowney is another one, too. Uh, even though the Seahawks' defense hasn't been very good, um, he's been one of the few defensive players that has made plays for that team. You know, the Eagles have... 10 total forced fumbles on the year. 10 total. The whole team. The whole defense. And Clowney himself has four. He has, has four. That's that's 40% of what the Eagles have. And um, he only has three sacks for the Seahawks, but he's been a good player on that defense. What, what he's brought to the table for Seattle, um, even though they don't have a good defense, he's been he's been kind of that steal for, the, for Seattle. He's been kind of that sneaky steal this year um, in the NFL. Uh, that's another. I think the Eagles could have traded for Clowney, and that would have been that would have been a, a big deal for the Eagles. To, if you had Clowney, and then you trade for Ramsey, I think the, the, those two additions would make the defense a lot better. Obviously, you get the best, the top three corner, and you get still a pretty a pretty good defensive end. Now, to me, obviously Roseman hasn't been up to par this year, but you know we'll we'll, we'll see how this this year plays out. We'll see how the off season goes. The players. Uh, we could start with receivers dropping balls. Uh, and I, I hate, it's been talked about earlier this year. The whole thing about receivers don't, the receivers don't have a good relationship with Wentz. To me, I don't understand how that equates to dropping balls. Like, you're a wide receiver in the NFL. There are certain balls you need to catch. Ertz, even this past Sunday, um, had a couple drops where they should have been touchdowns. Um... Aguilar, obviously, at Arcega wide side. It's really been the whole receiving core tight ends. Even Goddard's had a few where he should should have made the play. So I, I just don't I don't see that whole thing about I just hate that whole correlation of oh the the receivers don't have a good relationship with Wentz, so they're gonna drop balls. That 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 doesn't do any that no. Like obviously, yeah, it would be nice to have a good relationship from the with the receivers with your quarterback. And then also, like, just the whole team, like, there, there's been times where the defense has been really good, and then the offense is terrible, and it's been, it's been all year. The, uh, obviously, this past Sunday, Miami, uh, we play really bad defense, especially late in the second half, and the offense put up points. Two games before, you play Seattle and New England, and the offense generates what, like, 10 to 15 points total and the defense played really well it just seems like everything's broken um you know like the secondary something's got to happen with the secondary uh, in the off season uh, the secondary has been awful uh you got to trade for somebody you got to sign you got to draft hopefully howie can draft a decent corner uh not another sydney jones um even though you look at Jalen mills he was a it was a sixth or seventh round pick, and he's he's been pretty good for a sixth or seventh round pick. He's been pretty good, but uh, you know the players haven't been good this year. The receivers haven't been good. Secondary, like I said, uh, you know what Wentz. If you give if you give some talent for Wentz, he's gonna obviously be a lot better. But with 
You know, I, I think, like I said, I said on Instagram the other day, I don't think, I think we all think, thought that Wentz could be, uh, you know, a Brady or a Rodgers where he's just that good, where it doesn't matter who he has around him. Um, most quarterbacks need at least decent talent around them to, uh, you know, to be a good quarterback, and Wentz doesn't have that right now. Uh, so that's another thing. So, uh, you know, we'll, to me, I probably give the most blame to coaching, uh, even though, you know, once I, I think Grow could do, you can make do with what you have. You can run the ball a little more, knowing that the receivers haven't been good this year. So I feel like if you had to give somebody the blame here, even though I think there's no clear front runner, I'd have to go with coaching. Uh, I think, like, if you look at 2017, you looked at what Peterson, uh, Frank Reich, and Schwartz dealt with injuries-wise, um, they made that team look and play a lot better than maybe they really were. Uh, and this year, Mike Groh is just, he's not adapting to what he has. You know, even though you have a terrible receiving core, um, maybe you can run a little more two tight end formations. Because um, obviously Ertz and Goddard are playing better than what the receivers you have right now. Uh, you know, you can run the ball a lot more. Uh, you know, even even though I I think that Schwar Schwartz is getting a little more flack, I I still think that he could he could be making do with what he has as well. Uh, there's certain I mean you couldn't even stop Fitzpatrick. Uh, you know, four or five times in a row he just kept they kept going down, going going down the field. Uh, you know, I, I don't. Like I said, I don't think it's a clear, but I have to, if I'm going to have to go with somebody, it's going to be coaching. Obviously, the players have to perform. They're the ones performing, but, you know, play calling is a big, big part of that, and that's coaching. Uh, you know, so I, 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 I'll say it's coaching, but, you know, even the front office, obviously, Howie could have, could have did a lot more this year uh, to at least make the roster better. Um, I don't think he was taking chances because it's either – Maybe he just doesn't think they could win now. Maybe Howie knows something that we don't. Maybe he thinks that, you know, even going into the season, we had high expectations. Maybe he thought the whole time, maybe we can't win now. Maybe we need to, maybe Howie's just being patient and maybe there's something we don't know. I don't know. But, you know, to me, I think if you made the right moves, we could still, could have still been a, a playoff team at least. And I mean, <laughs> technically we could still be a playoff team somehow, some way. I don't know. But you guys let me know who you think gets the most blame for the Eagles struggles so far this year. Uh, you know, put in the comments below. Uh, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Rojas underscore media. Uh, and until next time, thank you guys for watching.